Hello, my name is Ellen Townsend and I'm a PhD fellow in the University of Virginia's Convergent Behavioral Science Initiative. My remarks today will focus on the challenge of leveraging behavioral science to translate community oriented strategies into clean water and urban environments. In the first part of this talk, I'll provide some context for the urban water challenges. I'll then give an example from a more developed uh, country and then uh, I'll provide a few recommendations. So in the face of uncertainty for potential disruptions, building resilience into urban water systems is an increasingly critical component uh, to the safety and prosperity of communities. And while innovations in engineering and advancements in technology can significantly cushion the effects of hazards, cities are having to run harder just to stay in place or keep up with rising water demands. Add to that the growing list of potentially harmful chemicals and pollutants in water and the deteriorating water treatment facilities, pipes and pumps that move water to where it's needed, then to convey it out uh, to treatment before returning to nature. Uh, the urban water challenges uh, are increasingly difficult to grasp. Therefore, to keep up with increasing complexity, a wider range of disciplinary perspectives might be needed to converge on more adequate solutions. One example of an increasingly dire water challenge is the Colorado River Basin in the Western US, US that supports uh, seven states in parts of Mexico. Nearly $1.4 trillion of annual economic benefit and 40 million people are facing an unprecedented risk of water shortages. Over the past two decades, consumptive water use in the Colorado River and its tributaries has surpassed total runoff. To help overcome this deficit in the short run, Depletion of water reserves in the river system's large reservoirs has cut availability to 46%. Reservoir depletion has already triggered first ever legally required cutbacks to Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico in 2020. With continued reservoir decline, which appears inevitable due to warming temperatures and hydrologic variability with climate change, the water allocations to lower basin states, Arizona, New Mexico, and California will increasingly cut back, leading to serious economic and social hardship and widespread ecological damage. Avoiding disastrous water shortages will require aggressive reduction in water use. In a recent study led by Brian Richter, myself and several University of Virginia researchers obtained annual data from water, urban water utilities across the Western US to document trends in water usage and service populations. What we found was that many cities have been able to accommodate population increases while simultaneously reducing their volume of water use, thereby decoupling growth from water use. This outcome is largely attributable to reductions in per capita water use, in res, per capita residential water use. And while to me, this achievement is incredibly impressive, uh, looking forward, the situation for urban water utilities um, grows more difficult. In 2017, the American Society of Civil Engineers rated the United States' water and wastewater infrastructure um, as a D and D plus respectively, and citing hundreds of billions of dollars in investment needs over the next two decades to meet current and future demands. While at the basin level, cattle feed crops, which end up as beef and dairy products, account for over half of uh, the basin's water consumption. Now let's transition to recommendations. The picture I paint of the Colorado River Basin is just one example that demonstrates how engineering and technical approaches have been able to build resilience in the face of uncertainty and that more progress is also needed. However, I think we often overlook the social um, aspects to development. And something that I've really started to appreciate is that global water challenges, or for that matter, environmental challenges, um, implicate human decision making and behavior. Put differently, whereas the problems to, are ostensibly a water challenge, the solution is likely to exist in the extent to which we can understand and promote the attitudes and behaviors of water system decision makers and users to adopt uh, responsible water practices. Uh, but 
I don't think we're making the most of what we know about behavior and social sciences and integrating that with our typical approaches and addressing water challenges. Uh, therefore, three areas where leaders should consider uh, for building water resilience that could potentially move the needle are enhancing community governance. Um, examples include uh, building inclusion, um, community cohesion, and motivating behavior. Um, two, uh, strengthening human and institutional capacities. Here, uh, capacities are uh, the ability to plan, manage, and implement um, and account for results. And three, uh, addressing past legacies that limit progress in partnership building. Lastly, by better understanding the, the psychology of behind stakeholder decision making and using participatory approaches, leaders can help maximize benefits and mitigate restraining forces to program success. Hopefully, uh, I've persuaded you uh, to consider behavioral science as a means for community-oriented strategies uh, to resilient systems and sustainable development. Um, and if this leaves you wanting to know more, um, this is my research. Um, so please feel free uh, to contact me afterwards. Uh, thank you.